a small mini laptop that also transforms into a handheld gaming PC. This is the WinMax 2. Hey guys, Ash here from C4E Tech and today in this video we're going to be talking about the GPD WinMax 2. So what this is basically is a laptop, a mini laptop that also beautifully transforms into a handheld gaming PC of sorts. Now guys, uh, GPD has been doing this for quite some time. In fact, the first GPD WinMax came about two years back and then they, they had a GPD WinMax, a, a, a mid-cycle uh, mid refresh with the AMD 4800U and the 1195G7. But that, though it launched in 2021, it felt very dated. It had huge bezels, it had, uh, it didn't feel like something that should have launched in 2021, 2022, right? So now they've gone ahead and addressed every single issue that almost every single issue that people had with the last WinMax. And this is the end result, the WinMax 2 greatly improved this time. So let's start with what are those improvements, why this is such a cool little device. They call it bezel-less, but it isn't. We still have bezels, but they've been thinned down greatly. They've increased the screen size here. The overall size of the WinMax has gone up, but not as it's not as big as you see in video. When I actually saw the initial renders, the initial pictures coming out, I thought this was gonna be very, very big. Uh, but with actual use, it's not that bad. Now, the size, the display size has gone up to 10.1 inches, so it's kind of perfect for productivity. The smaller the size, the better it is to use as a handheld, but Windows is not a very friendly operating system for smaller screens. 10.1 inches kind of seems like walking that fine line where it is still usable as a handheld. At the same time, you can get productive stuff done. Now, this display, it's an IPS LCD panel. It's been covered by Corning Gorilla Glass 5. The resolution has gone up. It's 2560 by 1600, which gives you about 299 pixels per inch. It's, it's 400 nits, the peak brightness, so it is quite bright. One more thing I really like about the display here is the aspect ratio. It's 16 by 10, so it's got a little bit of extra room to the top and bottom, so it's, it's not bad enough that it takes away, it adds way too much uh, black bars when you're watching video or playing a game. But at the same time, it has that little bit of extra real estate if you wanna say browse or something. Now, the screen to body ratio here is 90% for the screen. This is also a native landscape display. So that might not be a big issue. Typically what brands do is they get a portrait display, one that's made for phones or something and turn it around and fit it into a handheld. That's what even GPD did the last time around. That's what they do for say their Win 3. Now the problem with this is once you install an OS, everything boots up in portrait. That's not a big issue. You can always just change it. But with some older titles, some older games, when you try playing them, they would run only in portrait and then you'll have to uh, come up with some software workaround for it. That's not the case here anymore. And this is a touch screen, 10 point touch. It also has support for active pens, 4096 levels of pressure sensitivity and all that. So from a display perspective, there have been a lot of improvements and I really love what the GPD uh, WinMax 2 has to offer. Now let's go a little further down to the keyboard. The keyboard, again, they've changed everything. It's it's a lot easier to type on. Now, I'm not gonna talk about words per minute because my WPM isn't great to start with, but I found it very easy to actually type on this. I've been writing scripts on this from time to time. It's been really easy to do that, especially combined with that larger screen, the experience has been good. This keyboard has three brightness options. You can have it off or two different levels of brightness and this, uh, kind of irked me a little bit because the lowest brightness option on this keyboard is a little brighter than what it was on the WinMax. So that could have been done a little better, but then I just turn off the brightness, the keyboard backlight uh, when I'm using it in the night, I keep turning it on and off. There is a quick shortcut that you can uh, use to do that. So that's a pro. There is a trackpad up top and it uses Windows Precision drivers. Now, uh, it is a very small trackpad, so don't expect anything great out of it. But at the same time, it does what you would expect it to for the occasion where you just don't want to touch the screen, you want to do something quickly, you could do that with it, it works. Now, additionally, they have a couple of mappable buttons to the back. This is something we've seen on the Win 3 as well. Now, with buttons like these, you know, for me, the priority is they shouldn't, they shouldn't be in positions where you'd accidentally press them. And for that, GPD has done a good job. In my time with this, I've been using this for about uh, three weeks now, and I've never once accidentally pressed these buttons. And it's also good that they're there because you're doing something you wanna say quickly get the task manager up, you can do that. That's what I have one of these buttons mapped to. So okay, so far we've seen it's got a great display and 
the keyboard is fun to use and the trackpad is it's there. Let's now move on to specs. And here's where there is a little bit of a twist. The one I've been using is the Intel 1260p. It's, it's got 16 gigs of LPDDR5 at 5200, but there is another SKU. That's the AMD 6800U that has 16 or 32 gig RAM options at 6400. Now this, they've almost discontinued it. People who've already ordered it, they're gonna be fulfilling those orders, but they're not taking any new orders for the Intel. Now that's because there is no competition. The 6800U is so far ahead. It's so much better than the 1260p that there is no comparison between these two. Uh, I got an alpha unit, so I didn't pay MSRP for it. I paid $700 for this. So I'm kind of okay with the 1260p, but at the asking price for the 6800U, it is a, a no-brainer. It's such a good processor. It's such a good APU to have on a device like this. And the cooling, they've done a lot better this time around uh, from the days where the GPD went to. If you think about it, it needed that cooling mod to actually be usable day to day to where they are today. There's a lot of change. From a storage perspective, this one utilizes the regular M.2 2280. So the Steam Deck, for example, uses the 2230, which is a little more expensive to source. Since this has a standard 2280, you can easily swap it. It should accept any single-sided drive, so up to say two, four terabytes, you should be able to get into this. If that's not enough, there's also this slot right here. You can just unscrew it and easily add a 2230 M.2. So you could add another extra terabyte right there. And uh, GPD actually sells these drives, $139, and they uh, they said that they were selling uh, Western digital drives. So even if you're not gonna be buying a GPD WinMax 2, if you have a Steam Deck, that would be a good deal for you to upgrade with regards to your storage. Now to the other side, there's also this slot. This basically lets you optionally add a 4G LTE modem if you want to. So if you're one of those people who wants to pay for a data plan just for your mini laptop handle gaming PC hybrid, then you can go ahead and do that with the WinMax 2. Okay, let's now get to the port selection, which again is frankly excellent. We've first got this three and a half millimeter combo jack for your headphone and mic. Then there's this USB 3.2 Gen 1 port, type A, followed by an HDMI 2.1 port. And then we've got two type C ports, both of which support 100 watt power delivery fast charge. One of these happens to be Thunderbolt 4. For this, the Intel SKU, the AMD SKU, it'll be USB 4, but regardless, both of them will support eGPUs. So if you have one of these, this is the RS RTX 3080 gaming box. So basically it's got a water-cooled 3080 in it. It's pretty kick-ass. And if you have something like this, then you can go ahead, connect that to your WinMax 2 and play games better if you're gonna be outputting to a display. Okay, returning back to I.O., that's not all. We are not done yet. To the other side, we've got a micro SD card slot and a full-sized SD card slot. So you can throw in more storage over here if you want to. And over here, we've got two USB Type-A ports, 3.2 Gen 1. So that's a lot of I.O., right? To the front, over here, you've got this power key that has a fingerprint scanner built in. And there are four speakers on this one. That was one of the biggest cons for the last generation when Max. The speakers were abysmal. Like a lot of times when I was using it to watch stuff, I would be holding it like this. In bed, I would have my hands cupped underneath because that's the only way I could get a little bit of sound output. I could listen to the uh, dialogue or whatever I'm watching on screen. Uh, but with this, I've never had to do that. It's been perfect with regards to sound out, but it's been very loud and clear. Now, uh, from a gaming perspective, you get Hall Sensor sticks. That's a new improvement. Hall Sensor technology ensures that the sticks here aren't gonna be prone to stick drift, which is very common. Another very important upgrade is that these keys you see here, these used to be digital buttons, but they are analog triggers right now with 256 levels of feedback. So if you're gonna be playing, say, a racing game, uh, hitting the gas is not going to be ones and zeros anymore. You can have gradual acceleration if that's something you want. Barring this, you also get six axis gyroscope. And inside, you've got a 67 watt hour battery and you should be able to charge it from zero to 50 in about 20 minutes. Now, from a build material perspective, metal on the side, plastic to the back. Overall, this is a very awesome piece of technology. I've really been enjoying my time with the WinMax 2. Now, I could go into detail and talk about the different TDPs and everything, but it's GPD's kind of screwed me over here by uh, not selling the 1260p anymore. This queue is not available, so I'm not really gonna get into it. And you've been seeing a lot of gameplay footage so far. All those games, 
can run a lot better on the 6800SQ, which is the only one they're selling right now. So I'm gonna leave a link to their Indiegogo page in the description below, the page that you're seeing on screen right now. So if you're interested in picking a WinMax 2, go ahead, pack them on Indiegogo. Overall, despite not having the 6800U, which I'm still a little sore about, I've still been having a lot of fun with the WinMax 2. I think this could be a great little hybrid device if you're somebody who likes to play, but still wanna go ahead and use it for productivity. Oh yeah, there is one more thing. I, I can't believe I almost wrapped up the video without talking about it. This. Pretty cool, right? So maybe if you had an issue with the cosmetic aspect of the WinMax, they've addressed that. So these two little metallic sliders, they cover up the controllers when you aren't using it as a gaming handheld, and they just slot right into place over here when you need to use the controllers. From a weight perspective, obviously it is a little heavy. It's not as light as say a Steam Deck, or definitely not as light as a Switch. So there is a compromise there, but then again, if you're looking at buying a WinMax 2, you should be looking at playing this way and not really this way. As long as your hands are resting somewhere, holding the WinMax 2 in hand and gaming on it, I really didn't have any issue with that. In fact, in the night, I used to spend 30, 45 minutes gaming on this continuously. And unlike some of the other handhelds, the battery lasted all through my gaming sessions. I never uh, ended up running out of battery mid-session. So uh, good battery life, great display, improved ergonomics, and overall, still pretty compact. Now it's more of a productivity machine if you really want it to be. So I think GPD has done really well here. And tell me how I've done in this video because I'm kind of shooting this video a little differently. I'm not gonna go into what I'm doing differently, but just, just let me know how you felt this video turned out. I'd really love to know your thoughts. So leave a comment down below. And with that, I guess we are at the end of this quick little video. Thumbs up, thumbs down based on whatever you felt about it. Subscribe if you haven't yet. And if you're already subscribed, go ahead, turn on notifications by hitting that bell icon uh, if you wanna do a good deed for the day, because it's really not gonna make a difference because YouTube, hey, algorithms, right? Any which ways, thanks for your time. Thanks for watching. Until next time, my name's Ash. You've been watching C4E Tech, and I'm signing off for now. You guys have a great day. Bye-bye.